Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled the Wilkinson Power Divider. In this lecture we will look at basic properties of Wilkinson Power Dividers. We will also look at the normalized and symmetric form of the divider, the even mode analysis, odd mode analysis, the scattering parameters, unequal power division in the divider, and finally an example on how to design a Wilkinson Power Divider. The lossless T-junction divider suffers from the disadvantage of not being matched at all ports, and it does not have isolation between output ports. The resistive divider is matched at all ports, but even though it is not lossless, isolation is still not achieved. The Wilkinson power divider is a lossy three-port network that has all ports matched and the ports are also isolated. The Wilkinson power divider was developed by Ernest J. Wilkinson in 1960. It has the ability to split an input signal into two equal output signals in phase. It can also combine two inputs constructively into a single output. If the output ports are matched, the Wilkinson power divider will appear lossless. This is an image of an equal split Wilkinson power divider in which the power flowing into port 1 will be equally split into ports 2 and 3. Note that the ports are also connected by a junction of transmission line of length lambda over 4 and with impedance of square root of 2 Z0. And finally, there is a parallel resistor between ports 2 and 3 with value 2 Z0. The equivalent transmission line circuit is shown here. Now we will try to obtain the S parameters of the Wilkinson power divider. Taking advantage of the symmetry of the circuit, we can redraw the power divider in normalized and symmetric form. This will allow us to analyze the circuit by simplifying it to two simpler circuits driven by symmetric and anti-symmetric sources, which are called even and odd mode analysis. All impedances will be normalized to the characteristic impedance Z0. This is the normalized and symmetric form of the Wilkinson power divider. The network has been drawn in a form that is symmetric across the midplane. As you can see, with this red dotted line showing the axis of symmetry. These resistors in parallel with value of 2 combine to give a resistor of normalized value 1, which represents the impedance of a matched source. The quarter wave transmission lines have characteristic impedance Z, and the shunt resistor has a normalized value of R but it is split along the axis of symmetry into two resistors of value R over 2. And we will define two separate modes of excitation given by VG2 and VG3 to analyze the circuit. Now let's look at the even mode analysis, where VG2 and VG3 equal 2V0 which is shown here in these voltage sources. Since this circuit is symmetric and both ports 2 and 3 are excited with the same voltage, we can conclude that the voltage at port 2, which is VE2, equals the voltage at port 3, which is given by VE3. This means that no current will flow through the R over 2 resistors and also no current will flow through the short circuit between the inputs of the two transmission lines at port 1. We can then separate the network by the middle along the axis of symmetry and replace the bisections with open circuits. Here we are looking at the top half of the bisected network, where we have our source, 
are normalized impedance, port 2, the transmission line with impedance Z, port 1, voltage E2 and E1, and open circuits here. Now we can redraw this circuit as this. And then we will find VE2 and VE1. First, let's look at the input impedance at port 2 with the quarter wavelength transmission line and the resistor with normalized value 2. In topic 2, the input impedance of a quarter wavelength transmission line is given by Z squared over ZL, which is equal to Z squared over 2. Now, since we are looking at match ports, for port 2 to be matched, Z must equal the square root of 2. Therefore, the input impedance should be 1. Now, we can redraw this circuit to this where now the transmission line and the normalized resistor of value 2 are combined into this resistor of value 1. Now from this circuit, we can obtain that VE2 equals V0. And by even symmetry, because we excited port 3 with the same source, VE3 is also equal to V0. Now, we need to find the voltage at port 1. First, we need to find the voltage along the transmission line. So we need to declare some parameters. We will define x, or the distance here, to be 0 at port 1, and x to be minus lambda over 4 at port 2. Now, we need to write an expression for voltage along the transmission line, which is given by V of x equals V plus times e to the minus j beta x, which is the forward wave, plus the gamma reflection coefficient e to the j beta x, which is the backwards wave. Now we can write expressions for VE2 and VE1. For VE2, we have V of minus lambda over 4, which is equal to j v plus times 1 minus gamma, which is equal to V naught as we derived earlier. Now for VE1, we know that it's equal to V at 0. So it's equal to V plus times 1 plus gamma, and it's equal to J V naught over gamma plus 1 over gamma minus 1, where gamma is equal to 2 minus square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2. With this, we can obtain that VE1 equals minus j v naught times square root of 2. Now let's look at the odd mode analysis, where vg2 equals minus vg3 equals 2 v naught. This means that we're going to excite the network with an anti-symmetric source. At port 2, we will have 2 v naught and at port 3, we'll have minus 2V0. This means that the voltage at port 2, VO2, is going to be equal to the negative value of voltage at port 3 or VO3. This means that a voltage null is present along the axis of symmetry. And the circuit can be separated at the middle and we can replace the bisections with ground. Now we take the upper half of our bisected network, which is drawn here. Notice that we replaced the bisections with ground. Therefore, we can redraw the circuit as this. It's important to notice that the transmission line at port 1 is short-circuited. And by the property of the quarter wavelength transmission line at port 2, we will have an open circuit. 
Since we have an open circuit at port 2, the voltage at port 2, VO2, is the voltage present at the R over 2 resistor. Now, in order to match port 2 for the out mode, we need to set R equals 2. And then we're going to have a resistor with value 1 here and a resistor with value 1 here. And so the voltage at port 2, VO2 equals V0. And by odd symmetry, VO3, the voltage at port 3, is going to be equal to minus V0. And finally, since port 1 is short circuited for the odd mode, we have that VO1 equals 0. Now we are ready to obtain the scattering parameters for the Wilkinson power divider. With the superposition of the odd mode and the even mode, the total voltage can be obtained. The total voltage at port 1, VT1, is equal to the voltage of the even mode plus the voltage of the odd mode, both at port 1, which is equal to minus J V0 times square root of 2. The total voltage at port 2, VT2, it's equal to VE3 plus VO2 equals 2V0. And the total voltage at port 3 is VE3 plus VO3 equals 0. The total voltages can correspond to a match source of value 2V0 at port 2, with ports 1 and 3 also matched. The incident and reflected voltages from this configuration are then shown in this table, where V plus is the incident voltage and V minus is the reflected voltage. At port 1, we have no incident voltage, but we have a reflected voltage of minus JV naught squared of 2. At port 2, we have an incident voltage of 2V0 and no reflected voltage. And at port 3, we have no incident voltage and no reflected voltage. Now with these, we can obtain the scattering parameters. S12 equals to V1 minus over V2 plus, which is equal to minus J over square root of 2. And by symmetry, due to reciprocity, it's also equal to S21. Now, by symmetry of ports 2 and 3, S13 and S31 are equal to minus J over square root of 2, which are also S21 and S12. Now, S23 equals V2 minus over V3 plus, and it's equal to 0, and it's also equal to S32. This means that the ports 2 and 3 are isolated due to a short or an open circuit at the bisection. And now we can take advantage of the symmetry of ports 2 and 3 to obtain S22 and S33, which is equal to 0. Now the only parameter that we need to find is S11. To find it, we drive port 1 with voltage source 2V0 and match loads at ports 2 and 3, as shown here in this picture. And we find the normalized input impedance Zn. Now the input impedance looking into port 1 is now then the square root of 2 squared over 2, which is equal to 1. Since the input impedance is 1, the source is matched, and therefore we have that S11 equals 0. Now furthermore, the voltage is split equally and with the same phase at ports 2 and 3. So no power is dissipated in the resistor, making the divider lossless when the outputs are matched. Now we put everything together, and the scattering matrix for the Wilkinson power divider is given by this. 
Wilkinson power dividers can also be made with unequal power splits. We can consider the power ratio between ports 2 and 3 to be a constant k squared, which is equal to p3 over p2. And now, to obtain unequal power division, we need to find the impedances for the quarter wavelength transmission lines given by Z02 and Z03, and also the resistances at port 2 and port 3 given by Z0K. Z03 is equal to C0 times the square root of 1 plus k squared over k cubed, and Z02 is equal to k squared times Z03, and the value for R is Z0 times k plus 1 over k. Let's look at a very quick example of a Wilkinson power divider. Design an equal split Wilkinson power divider for a 50 ohm system impedance at a frequency F0. The solution is very simple. Since we already derived the equal split Wilkinson power divider, the quarter wave transmission lines in the divider will have a characteristic impedance of square root of 2 times Z0, which is given by this value. And the shunt resistor value is given by 2Z0 and it's equal to 100 ohms. And the transmission lines are quarter wavelength long at a frequency F0.